Okay, so I've got a project today. I'm gonna take this little, it's like a little breakfast stand you put on your bed or your couch when you're, you know, wanting to eat in bed or something. It's also, it's just kind of decorative. But I'm gonna take this, and it's cute as it is. It looks, looks old. But I'm gonna try to make it look a little more rustic. And I'm gonna decoupage um, this old feed looking sign on it. And what that does is when I'm done, it's gonna look like this was made out of a piece of old sign. Um, and it just gives a, a vintage piece more of an aged, unique look. So I kind of like doing that. I like doing it over old wood. This is kind of white, so I want this to pop. And it's gonna be kind of translucent when I put it on this wood. Um, if I want it to be seen well, then I need to kind of dry brush underneath there with some white chalk paint. So if I do that and just kind of give it a dry brush, it's gonna look like more like white like the sign's intended to look. Otherwise it'll blend into the wood, which would be a cool look too. But I'm gonna try something different today and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a whitewash. All right, so that's step one. Okay, so I started doing my dry brush and I'm, this is kind of a rough cut wood and I don't wanna, I don't really wanna do it too thick, but I'm gonna do it a little thicker in the middle where the sign's gonna be because you're not gonna see that part as much. But I'm only going to do the top because I want the sides right here and down here as much as possible to kind of look like the same, just regular wood. But just trying to get it on kind of rough. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to blend it a little bit so the thicker part in the middle doesn't look like it's too thick when you, you know, like a, a line dividing it. Best part of doing this kind of stuff on old wood is it's not about being perfect. It's about being imperfect because you want it to look like it came from 1920 from some old barn. And, you know, that's the look I want. That's the look I kind of like, you know, to decorate with is, you know, like a vintage rustic look, but nothing that looks too rough. I like stuff that looks like it's found, it's been in a barn, it's old, but like it hasn't fallen off the back of 42 trucks. <laughs> so um, I'm just giving it a real fast wipe down. I'm going to do a little more right here in the middle where the sign's going to be because that's where the cow head and everything's going to be. And it's black so it's going to stand out more if the background is a lighter color. That's the thing about decoupage is kind of fun is that you can do so many different looks, you know, you can, if you lighten up the background, it pops. If you don't lighten up the background, it blends in a little bit more. It looks like a real old, old piece of wood. I just did a toolbox that I have on my carriage house page that uh, I didn't lighten it up in the background and it just looks like it blends into the real old wood and it was a really old vintage farrier toolbox from who knows when, but it was super old. So it made it just look extra cool because it looked like it was made from an old sign. And that's the stuff that you just can't find anymore. And if you do find it, it's crazy expensive. <laughs> but um, if anybody's interested in doing this, I can send you a link where you can get the decoupage paper. I ordered this paper online and there's all sorts of different styles. Some, some are fancier, some are more French country, some are real country and rustic. It just depends on what you're wanting. They have it's tissue paper. It's actually like tissue paper that you use for wrapping gifts. It's that thin. So when I put it on with my Dixie Bell Gator Hide Poly, it's like a polyacrylic. Not only does it waterproof it so you can set stuff on it later, but um, it, it seals it down permanently. And um, it just looks really good. So, all right. So that's basically, I just use, I don't, I don't usually use this chalk paint. This is just something somebody gave me. It's just home decor. I think you can get it at Joanne's Fabrics. It's like a country white because I didn't want anything too white. A lot of times I'll use like Rust-Oleum's linen white because it's super white. But I just wanted more of a country, country look. So if you see, excuse my saw horses and my mess out here. I just decided to do this outside so it wouldn't be too messy. I just did the top. That way the sides kind of still look cool and old. You could do the whole thing, but this is what I decided to do. All right, this was step two. Now we'll move on. I'm gonna let this dry 
and then we're gonna put a coat of the Dixie Belle gator hide on here and uh, then we'll put the, the signage on it or the tissue and decoupage it and I'll show you what that is and that'll be step three. Okay so now I am gonna put a, a coat of this uh, Dixie Belle gator hide on this. I'm gonna do one thin coat first because I want to have something on here before I put the decoupage paper on it. Hopefully you can hear me because they're trimming trees on the street over and it's all you can hear is the big trucks. So this goes on in super thin coats. So I just take my brush and I'm just going to do a thin coat on it. It doesn't have to be thick. That's my neighbor getting their trees trimmed over there if you can hear it. Great day to choose to do this. So I'm just going to put one coat on it, but I'm going to completely cover it, and then I'm going to completely let it dry. And this doesn't take too long to dry, but I'm going to give it probably like an hour to dry, and then I'll put the other on it. Because this way it'll be a little smoother when it goes down. When you put the tissue paper down on this with this gator hide, it instantly turns into like toilet paper hitting water. It's like super thin. So you have to do it kind of in sections. So that's why I'm going to let this dry first and then I'm going to do the decoupage real slowly with the gator hide. I'll show you how I do it. But I just want basically a, a thin coat down because this is waterproof. So the nice thing is, is if you put anything on it, it's waterproof. It won't, it won't get affected. It's old wood anyway. I mean, the wood is like a rough cut wood, but this piece is actually not an old piece. I actually bought this at um, it's that new little furniture outlet by Bell's Home Eccentrics or whatever. That's where I got it. So this is not an actual old piece. When I do sell stuff that's old, I'll make sure that I let people know it's vintage, but when I sell things that aren't old, I want to let them know it's not old. So, all right. So that's a good thin first coat. And then what I'm gonna do is let this dry. I'm gonna go rinse my brush out because this is water-based. But if I don't rinse this brush out, it will get hard quick. So I'm gonna shut this real well. This is the best stuff. It's so waterproof and you can uh, paint over white without it turning yellow. That's what I like about it. So that's, that's the next step. We'll be back in just a minute for the last part, which is decoupaging. Okay, I'm back. So now we've got the, the piece. I moved indoors because they were trimming trees outside and it was too noisy. <laughs> but now I've got this piece. I've got it kind of dry brushed with a white chalk paint. I have a, one coat of the gator hide already on it that's dried real well. And so now I'm ready to uh, start to decoupage my paper on it. Um, now this paper is a little bit bigger than the actual piece. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I get the word in and then I'm going to just fit it to this. So what I'm going to do is there's two ways you can do that. You can either take a pair of scissors, you know, fold it where you want it to be, and you can cut the sides, you know, just, just where you need to. Or after you put it on to get like a more rough look, you can take sandpaper and go across it all the way down so it kind of gives it a rougher feel. And I think that's what I'm going to try to do today. I just want to make sure that when I put it on, I don't get it off the, uh, the lettering because I want the lettering to be right about there. So I'm just going to kind of fold it down, take the end of my brush maybe and just kind of go like that and do that on each side. So I'm losing a little bit of each side of the sign, but the thing about decoupage that's cool is you can do that and make it look rough on the edges. So like it was, you know, purposely done that way. You can also take pieces of uh, decoupage and you can cut them out and decoupage onto top of the other things. And actually, now that I think about it, I might go ahead and just cut the sides because as I put this down, I'm gonna do it in increments. I'm gonna paint an area and lay it down. And I wanna make sure that I have my lettering right at the very top. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the sides. Now, if this wasn't a piece that it was, if, like if this was a piece where this uh, decoupage paper was gonna be smaller than the actual um, you know, piece I'm working on, I would wet this paper and I would just kind of pull it apart with my fingers to give it a rough edge. 
because it, anytime you wet decoupage paper, the tissue paper, um, it, it gets like, literally like tissue paper, just pulls apart real quick. But what it does is it kind of gives it a better rough edge, but this is gonna exactly go to the edge, so I'm not too worried because if I have any pieces that look like they're kind of going towards the edge, and they're kind of hanging over after I'm done. I'm just gonna take a piece of sandpaper and kind of rough it right off. But I think I'm gonna do this only because I wanna make sure that my lettering gets centered right on this and I don't lose it off the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this strip. And the funny thing about this paper is I save all these little scraps because I might be able to use them somewhere else. Uh, it's all about how you blend it in. So I'm just, I keep little pieces Sometimes, I, like, you can cut just one part of the design. Like, if you just wanted the, the words and not the cow on it, you could do that. You could put it, you know, like, you could go sideways with it like that. But I want the actual whole thing on there. And after I get it on, there's ways you can blend the edges, too. You can bring in some, some darker color chalk paint or stain or whatever you want and blend it. But since I want to make sure my words get on here right, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start from this side and work down. Um, that way I make sure my words and my lettering are all kind of centered when I start. Because I'm going to do this in increments. So I'm like going to set it here for now. And I'm going to start by probably just pulling this piece over. I'm not going to crease it. I'm just going to pull it over. That way I can paint, roll it back, paint over top of it and smooth it down and then just start working my way down this way because I want to make sure my lettering is right. Um, one thing about this is I use the Dixie Belle Gator hide on this. I don't sell this, by the way. This is, I got this um, local craft stores usually sell it. I'm not one of the reps. So I got this from Pick and Boots Vintage, which is, you know, they have a lot of different Dixie Belle products in there. Um, but when you put this down, you want to make sure you kind of get the same thickness of a layer as you go along. Because if I get a real heavy duty thick coat of it here, and I smooth it all down, but then I get a lighter coat here, you're gonna see a difference in the way it dries. It's gonna be darker up here and look lighter here, and it kind of gives an uneven coat. You know, an uneven, I should say an uneven look is what it does. So, now this is always kind of interesting to see how it turns out, because I am no, by no means a perfectionist at this. This is something I'm still kind of new at, but you know, like I said, I like doing it on older pieces, because it's not about perfection, it's about imperfection. And seeing how it's going to turn out. And as my cousin used to say, you can up, there ain't nothing you can do that you can't fix. <laughs> so I'm going to put, I'm going to start off by remembering how far up I'm going. I mean, I don't have to go, I can go higher than it, it's not going to hurt. But I want to at least start off up here. So I'm going to put a thick coat, or not a thick, but I like a reasonable size, you know, just coat of this right here. I don't want to get it too thick because I've got carpet underneath here and I don't want it to drip through. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. I might just move this down to here so it doesn't drop on the carpet because there's little lines, you know. So I'm going to just do that. I'm going to get a fairly decent amount. Try to make it nice and level, like, you know, going across. Not too thick, not too light. And you can't see it because it's clear. I've used this stuff on um, tables after I've chalk painted them, and it's beautiful for sealing it. All right, so I'm going to start by putting this down. Hopefully you can see it, because I know my, I'm kind of in the way. And make sure that it's gonna be centered. I'm gonna have to pull it up just a hair more. Okay, so I want it up about, ooh, see, it gets right into the, right about there. And I'm gonna, Pick it up so it doesn't adhere too quick. And it looks centered about there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush, dip it back in, and paint right over top of it. And I'm going to paint towards from the center towards the outskirts. And the reason I'm doing that is I want to push any little air bubbles out. And now this is going to wrinkle as you do it. You're going to see wrinkles in this, and that's okay because the wrinkles will dry. You'll still have some wrinkles. Some people are really good at this and they don't get any, I'm sure, but I'm doing this over old wood. So it doesn't matter if I get wrinkles because it's part of the imperfection of it. That's what I, I like about it. But as I do it, 
um, and I see wrinkles. I'll try to smooth out as much as I can, but if I can't, I'm not going to freak out over it because after this dries, most of those wrinkles will automatically clear up on their own. And if they don't, I'm going to use them as part of the design and probably maybe even dry brush over them, sand a little bit to make it look like pieces of a sign that kind of were coming apart. So that's kind of how I do it. So now I'm going to pick up this side and I'm going to pull it up to where I pretty much ended maybe a little bit more so there's not a line. And I'm gonna put some more of this down in a small section. I don't wanna get too big because I wanna make sure that as I go, I can, um, I don't wanna rip it either. So like, I'm just gonna kinda pick it up. I kinda went over the paper there so I had to stretch it out. I'm gonna be real gentle with this paper so I don't pull on it too hard and make it rip. Because it gets so fragile because it's tissue paper you're dealing with. But that's kind of what I like about it because you can use posters when you do this, but they're not translucent. So when you use a poster, it just looks like kind of like painted right over, you know, it's just like glued to the wood. This makes it look like, because you can see the wood through it, it actually gives it an appearance of like it's part of the wood. That's what I like about it. So now I'm gonna lay this down and brush this way. I'm brushing away from what I just started with because I want to push the air bubbles that way because that's the way we're going now. So, and if you see big air bubbles, you can kind of, you have just a few seconds to kind of pull it back up and push it back down. And you're painting right over top of the tissue with the Dixie Bell Gator Hide. So it seals it on both sides. Okay. So let's see. Let me finish over here. When you're doing really big pieces, the secret is just go slow. Take your time doing it. You don't have to be in a rush. You know, down here is not glued yet. Nothing's on it, so I'm good there. I'm just trying to smooth this out as much as I can. And if you're really rough with your paintbrush, it can tear up here. So you just gotta make sure that you don't um, get too rough. Sometimes, like after I'm done, like this has got little lines and little imperfections in the wood, so I'll probably go over and be a little rough in those areas just to kind of cause some distress in those spots because it's only going to make it look older. And along the edges, I usually try to make sure I get enough underneath there so that it, it adheres good because if you don't have it underneath there, it won't. And mind you, if I have any little pieces like this left over right here, I'm just going to hit some sandpaper on them and they'll come right off. So see how that kind of already looks like part of the wood? It's starting to, like, you can see the wood grain coming through the paper. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and do another section. Get the same amount on my paintbrush. And see, because this I painted it white underneath, you can see it better. If I had not painted it white, it would look more like just a piece of the wood. It would be blended into the wood itself, which, like I said, is a cool look as well. But I kind of wanted it to look like the sign intended, which is kind of white. So, and it, like, I've got some little deep grooves and cracks here. I'm gonna try to get it down inside this little crack so that it adheres down in there too when, you know, when I do it. And I'm trying to keep tabs on where I stop so I know where um, my end spots are. So now I'm gonna lay this down, get some more. I'm not, before I lay it completely down, I'm gonna, I use my brush to smooth it as I go. So like, I don't know if you can see, hopefully I got the right angle on this. I probably should have had the camera on the other side. <laughs> but um, I'm going away with it here so you can kind of see that it's pushing the air bubbles that way. Okay. And over here on the corner, I'm just going to lift this up a hair. And I'm going to try to not put too much because if I put too much, you're going to see a thick line right there. And I don't want that. So. I want it to all be pretty much uniformed. Not to say it's not happened to me and I don't get it, but when, it do, when I do, I just try to make it look like part of the, the wood, like I said. But it's starting to look like more like part of the wood. Okay. So I'm going to pick up another little piece. And this is the area where I always got to remind myself to slow down and not get too fast because as I get towards the end, I get excited. I'm like, woohoo, almost done. But then I realize, well, you could put too much here and it, and it might not look right or you could rip your paper. And if I rip it, it's still going to look okay because <laughs> it's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to look like 
an old sign, you know, that somebody made a little breakfast table out of, you know. This Dixie Bell Gator hide goes a long way too. It's not the cheapest stuff in the world. I think I think what I paid for this big bottle was 45 bucks, but I've already used it on several projects and I'm not even, I'm, I mean, I've only used a tiny bit because it, it, you don't need a whole lot, it goes on thin. So, okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down again and I'm gonna get some more on my paintbrush and push it that way. And I'm gonna kinda pick it up here because I see a little bit of an air bubble right below the cow's jaw. I just figured I'd show you guys. I've had a lot of people ask me how to do this and I watch a lot of tutorials and I watch people do it because you don't know until you watch somebody do something. And I just thought it was so unique, but I've seen people do it on dressers and um, I'm gonna move it this way so it can get on my carpet. I've seen people do it on dressers and different pieces of furniture and it looks so cool that way too but um, I like using it on old wood and smaller pieces because it just to me looks like something, somebody found a piece of scrap wood and decided to make something out of it, you know? But um, I just figured, hey, we're all quarantined. Might as well do a project and share. But like I said, if you guys want to try this, just PM me or message me or whatever and I'll send you the link to where I get it. It's cheap, like a piece of this paper might cost you five bucks or three to five bucks. And some places like, where I was getting it, she'd give you like two pieces for like six dollars, you know. I ordered some of the same stuff over and over again because I like it so much. Like I have one that says, um, it's like a tr an old trolley pulley sign and it just looks cool and it has like national manufacturing on one side and that's what I did a vintage toolbox with and it looked really good. I'm going to lift this up here because I have a little bit of a lip here that I didn't get enough on so I'm going to make sure I get, get it all the way across because that's my last point and then I'm gonna push it down with my brush. Okay, so that actually went on pretty dang good. I've gotten better at this. I used to, at the first few times, I like thought I was gonna put the whole piece down at one time and then brush it out. And you can't do it that way, with big, especially with big pieces, because it ends up, you end up with air bubbles underneath that you can't get out and it looks kind of funky. And I mean, it still looked good on the pieces I did it on, but I mean, I kind of, I've learned to do it in sections. So now the nice thing about this Dixie Bell Gator hide on top of this is I am sealing it as I'm going along. So by the time this dries, it's waterproof, it's sealed. I don't have to go back over and varnish it. A lot of people, when they do um, de decoupage, they use Mod Podge to put it on, which it's like a glue. It's like, it looks like Elmer's glue, but it, it's not sealing it. You still have to go back over and seal it with something, you know, to protect it. And I mean, it's, it's good for other uses. I mean, a lot of people use it on fabric and stuff and you can transfer images with it. But I love this because it's so durable and it really, it's like one step and then you're done. So, all right, so it's pretty much all on. That little piece on the edge, I'll go over those if there's any loose pieces with sandpaper when I'm finished, just to get them off. But now like what I'm gonna do is see I have little splits in here and like spots in the wood where, cause this was pieces, small pieces all in one area. So I'm just gonna go through and I am gonna kinda push my brush into the little, like the little, what do you call it, um, knot that was in this piece of wood just to make it look more realistic. And if there's any really deep grooves like through here and I push my brush down into them like that, it kind of pushes the paper down into it and looks more like it's in the wood, not on top of the wood, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna just go down each little crack, kind of push my brush just to kind of give it a, make it look like it's really part of the wood. This piece is gonna be for sale. Um, usually most of my stuff is, once in a blue moon I end up finding something that I wanna keep. But if you're interested in this, just PM me and I'll send you a price on it. Um, but I'm just gonna go through, get all my little knots filled in. Even if it kind of mars the sign a little bit, it's okay, because it's, it's meant to look old. It's meant to look like part of a barn that somebody used to make something. Which, trust me, if I could find a part of a barn that had this on it, I would. And I would but I'm not very good at building things, 
So it would be a little more difficult for me. If I can find the piece already put together and then just decoupage the sign on it, it makes it so much easier. But this would look cute like on a little farmhouse uh, bedroom, like you put it, you know, set it up on the bed in the guest room or something, put like a little coffee cup and a little, you know, some little books or something on it, or I had it sitting in front of a fireplace that, um, for a while where I was trying to kind of cover up an area and I had a basket on top of it. You could put it on a table. You could turn this over and use it like a basket type thing. I almost thought about doing the underside because, um, the underside looks similar too, and I thought, oh, I should put one on the underside, and that way you can flip it over either way and have the old signage on it. You could even stand this up in front of something. Like, you could stand it up on a counter, in front of a fireplace, anywhere where you wanted to kind of have, you know, like, that look. You know, just kind of get, you could put it in front of a window if you want to block a, a window or something. Put it in front of your cat litter box to hide your cat litter box, because <laughs> it's got little, it's got little legs on the sides like that. So like if you stand it up like this, it, it, it'll sit, you know, just like that. Boom. But if, if you notice, the sign's not going nowhere when I pick it up because it is adhered. At this point, it's there. And I'm just going through and getting all the little pieces that, you know, are in the between of the slats and pushing them down a little bit, making them look all, you know, old vintage but if I had not painted that backside white you wouldn't have seen it this well it would have been a lot darker and it would have looked just like that black lettering over top of this wood but like I said that's actually a cool look too and um, if you go on my site I have the vintage um, toolbox that I did and I used that trolley sign on it if, if that's still for sale um, it's kind of pending pickup, but I'm not sure if the owner's, the person's going to still get it or not. So that's still for sale too. Um, go on my site though. Everything I post on there, I sell. Like I said, once in a while I'll find something kind of cool and I want to keep it. I've got some old radio cabinets that I want to do this too, and I think it would look really good. So that's basically it. Now I'm going to let it dry, and I'm going to try and get this up close so you can see. But it's got. It looks like an old piece of sign on top of, you know, this is an old table I'm doing it on, so if you see drips, don't freak out, because I'll probably decoupage something on that when I'm done. You can do this decoupage on any kind of furniture. You can put it on tables. Old tables look the best, but, um, you know, any kind of thing. You could do your kitchen table if you found a cool stencil you wanted or something on it, but that just kind of gives it a whole different look, and like I said, I'm going to come back here in a little bit when it dries, and this little flap here, I'm going to just take sandpaper and go like that, and when it's dry, you wouldn't even know. It's just going to look like a rough edge. And down here, where the, the edges were, I could sandpaper that a little too if I wanted, but it actually blends in pretty darn good because I painted that white color underneath it. So that's pretty much it. I will try to do um, some more tutorials here because, I, like I said, I've had a lot of people asking me how to do things, and I'm more than happy to show you how to do stuff. Um, go out and check out my carriage house page if you're not already, not already following it. Um, I redo furniture, reupholster, chalk paint. If there's something you want done like this and you have a piece that's really cool and you want me to do it, let me know. I'll do it. Um, and I can give you a price. Um, it's, not, it's not too horribly hard to do though, so if you want to try it yourself, you know, try it. I mean, start on something really old or something, just scrap. You could just take a regular piece of wood and do it for a wall hanging. This would be a cool wall hanging, actually. So, anyway, hope that helps show you how to do decoupage. All right, have a good one. I just wanted to show the finished piece. Um, if you notice, I sanded down with the ledges so they all look kind of just rough right on the wood. And this is a piece that's gonna actually sit like that on a bed or on a couch. You can put your drinks on it. It's all dry now. See if you look at it. It all got um, pushed into the wood real nice. Looks like a piece of the wood. The little uh, little holes and everything, a little knot in the wood, all the little imperfections. But um, I just wanted to sh just wanted to share that. And uh, 
I'll have pictures of it staged probably here on my carriage house page. So if you want to see what I how I stage it or what I do with it, you know, you can. But it can be set up too like that, like a sign. You can put it anywhere. I just think it's kind of cool.